The Ebro Delta is Catalonia's largest wetland, home to hundreds of aquatic species and a place with a long fishing tradition. For centuries, the local association, Brotherhood of San Pera, has been fishing in the largest lagoon, the Encangisada. But a few years ago, their usual catches suddenly dropped. Instead, they found a surprising newcomer, the blue crab, a ferocious North American crustacean that has invaded the area, decimating local species. What happens is that it eats all the young species. It eats all the eggs and destroys our nets. It eats everything. It ate all the endemic fish here. With other species largely gone, local fishermen switched to catching the blue crab. In the first few years, they were abundant, but they weren't highly priced. Now it's the opposite, fewer but worth more. But hey, that's the fisherman's life. Local researchers say allowing professional fishing of these new crabs is the best hope of stopping an explosion in the population. Catalonia has put in place a special co-management committee with the aim of providing better scientific advice, improving capture and streamlining blue crab trade through the fishing market. This part of Spain is being closely watched by other regions increasingly affected by blue crab invasion. The General Fisheries Commission for the Mediterranean has launched a regional research program on the species propagation across the Mediterranean Sea. We need to solve problems with knowledge, and this knowledge comes from all parties uh, involved in the problematic. Uh, that is fishermen, fisheries administration, and also scientists and also NGOs. Innovative technology in Catalonia's large-scale fishing infrastructure appear to have had an impact. Its blue crab population has apparently stopped growing, though more studies are needed. In any case, the species, likely brought from America in the ballast waters of commercial ships, is here to stay. It must be said that an eradication of this species is virtually impossible due to its inherent characteristics. But our goal is to be able to control the population to minimum levels, to allow the other species to recover, and thus allow fishermen to once again take advantage of all the resources they once had. One major positive is that the blue crab tastes great, so fishing it intensively is a win-win for the environment, the fishing sector and consumers. Restauranteurs like Alba Guzman have embraced the North American invader as a local delicacy. The Atlantic blue crab might seem unfamiliar to Mediterranean cuisine, but the chef says it fits perfectly with other seafood, served either as a main dish or in broth, snacks, appetizers, sauces and paella. We used to use different, much more expensive species, such as lobsters or the spider crab, which is not native. It had to be delivered from Galicia. And now we have the blue crab, which has a similar flavor and taste. So we have a great top quality product at a price that is suitable for affordable restaurants, which is also a good thing. But invasive species aren't just in Catalonia. In Greece, in the Gulf of Elefsina, west of Athens, local fisherman Yorgos is taking the plunge in search of another non-indigenous species. He's come to gather large bivalve mollusks covering the shallows. Originally from the Indo-Pacific region, they spread to this part of the Mediterranean through the Suez Canal, one of the primary pathways for non-indigenous species into the Mediterranean. A quick dive yields an abundant catch. This is the so-called pearl oyster, Pinctada imbricata radiata. In addition to food, we sometimes find pearls. It can be consumed raw, baked, steamed or fried in pasta or risotto. The fishermen sell the pearl oysters to local fishmongers who then sell them for five euros per kilo, but the trade is constrained by a lack of regulation. Unlike mussels and other popular local mollusks, pearl oysters are considered an exotic species and Greek legislation doesn't cover their exploitation for human consumption. 
John is working to change this. His research calls for the legalization of pearl oyster fishing in Greece so that they can be fished sustainably and sold for higher added value. It's very important because it offers an alternative for the fishermen to improve their income as the pressure on the natural stocks of other shellfish increases due to overfishing and climate change. Researchers at the University of Patras have concluded that pearl oysters don't harm endemic species and can be fished sustainably. They've drawn up new rules and standards for the whole value chain, from fishing specifications to best storage and transportation practices. Recipes with pearl oysters are already being studied at cooking schools like this one, soon to be served all along the Greek coastline. People like this meal immensely. I would even call pearl oysters a superfood. They are rich in proteins with minimal carbohydrates and fat, and they have a lot of flavour and a delicious taste. Legalisation could be good for aquaculture too. In Sagiada, near the Albanian border in western Greece, Spiros and his father grow shellfish on submerged ropes. The only invasive species that gives them trouble is the translucent ascidians that need to be constantly removed. But the farmers don't mind the pearl oysters occasionally found among their main harvest. They say this could be another product to sell if the regulatory framework accounted for this non-indigenous species. We can't grow them legally, nor sell them. And so we just basically gather them for our own consumption whenever we have parties or whenever special people come. The aquaculture sector is expanding rapidly in this part of Greece. Mussels and oysters help keep water clean from excessive nutrients. They're also a great healthy food source, so the cultivation of pearl oysters could be a harmonious fit. It grows fast. It tastes good, the markets are present, so it's, I think it's a matter of time uh, to, to commercialize this new resource. We cannot uh, eradicate the species, we have to co-evolve with them as a society and uh, as a production sector. The invasion of hundreds of non-indigenous species into the Mediterranean Sea over the past few decades is a major challenge, but it's also an opportunity for the fishing sector to adjust and make the most of it.